Let's take a look at the first problem. Here is a graph. Nothing's really labeled, but I do know that the graph goes through these points. Here's x, here's y, and I want you to tell me what is the equation of this line. Now, a lot of students get stuck when you first learn this, but you kind of get over it pretty quick once you realize that all lines fo follow the same form, m times x plus b. So all you have to do is write down the important information, m and b. Now, b is the y-intercept. What does that mean? It means where does the line cross the y-axis? Here it crosses up at 8, 0, 8. So the y-intercept b is called 8. So we now know what this number is in the equation of a line. Next, we try to figure out what the slope is, and we can get that from looking directly at the graph as well. Now this graph is slanting downward, so we know it's a negative slope. We go down 1 over 1. There's another point on the line. Down 1 over 1. Down 1 over 1. Down 1 over 1. So for every time, it's basically down 1 and over 1. So it's negative 1 going down and then over 1. Now when you divide this, you just get a slope of negative 1. Of course, it's negative, which tells us it's going this direction and so on. So now that you have that information, you can construct the equation of a line. m, we now know, is negative 1 times x plus b, but b is 8. Now we can leave it like this, that's fine, because it, it is very clear that the slope is negative 1 times x plus uh, b, sorry I didn't put the 8 there, like this, but usually we don't write a coefficient of negative 1, usually what we just say is negative x plus 8, because you know that there's always an invisible 1 here, so this is negative 1 times x plus 8, this is the best answer, if you want to circle the previous answer, I'm okay with that too. So the answer to this is negative x plus 8. Now it's always a good idea to at least check one or two points on the line just to see. So let's go down here and say what happens when x is equal to 8. If we put an input in of 8, what happens? Well, if I put an 8 here, I have negative 8 plus 8, which means I get a y value of 0. So when x is 8, y is 0. So this is a point on the line. Let's pick one more. Let's put a number 5 in for x, negative 5, negative 5 plus 8 is positive 3. So when x is 5, y is 3. So this point is also on the line. And you can put any value you want for x, and you will get the equivalent or the corresponding y value that falls along this line. So this is the equation that describes all of the points on this line. Keep in mind, even though I'm doing whole numbers and telling you what about x is 1 and x is 2 and x is 3? You can pick any value for x. If you put a value of, you know, 1 half in there and add the fractions and get the number, you're going to get a fractional y value also, which will be on the line. So any number for x you can put in. That's the bottom line. All right, so that's the equation of the line for problem number one. Let's take a look at problem number two. Now, in this case, I'm going to do something a little different. Instead of giving you a graph, I'm going to tell you that the slope is just equal to negative 6. And I'm going to tell you that the y-intercept is 0, 10. And from this, I want you to write down the equation of the line. Well, if the slope is negative 6, then you just know that m is negative 6. You're done. There's nothing else to, to write. You know the slope is this. And the y-intercept b is what? It's 10, right? Because yes, the y-intercept is 0, 10. Notice that any time you cross the y-axis, it's 0 for x and some number for y. So if the y-intercept is 0, 10, it means the y-intercept is here. And when we write it down, we just say that b is equal to 10. So it's the y value where it crosses the y-axis there. Right now that you have both of these pieces of information, it's very simple because you know it's m times x plus b. And so m is negative 6 times x plus b is 10. And this is the final answer. This is the equation of the line, negative 6x plus 10. Right? If you were to graph this, then you would obviously find out that it has this slope and this y-intercept, because this is the y-intercept, comes from there, and this is the slope, comes from there. This is the equation of the line that has these characteristics. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. We're going to flip-flop back to giving you a graph, and you want to write down the equation of the line for this graph, and you're looking for mx plus b, and you want to know the slope and the y-intercept. The y-intercept, b, is just where does this thing cross the y-axis? It crosses right here at y is equal to 4. So the y-intercept is 4. 0 comma 4, really, 0 comma 4. But the y-intercept, we just write it down as the number 4 for b. What about the slope? 
Well, for that, we have to look at this. We know it's positive because it's sloping up into the right. This one we knew was negative because it was sloping down into the right. And so we had to go down and then over and then down and then over and then down and then over. We wrote it like this to get a negative slope. But this one is going up one, two, three, and then over one. And then one, two, three, and then over one. So the slope is up three and over one. And that means the slope is just equal to three. Okay, so we can now construct this line. M, the slope, is 3 times x plus b, the y-intercept, is 4. 3x plus 4. And this is the final answer. Now, you can always check yourself. Does this equation of the line really predict all of the points on this line? Well, let's just pick one. Let's pick this one right here. This point is 1, 7. Let's see if it's on the line. x is equal to 1. If we put x is equal to 1, you get a 3 times 1 is 3, and then 3 plus 4 is 7. So 1 comma 7 is on the line. And if you pick any other point on this line, you will find that it does, when you plug it into this equation, it does satisfy it. So we know that it is, that this is the correct equation of, of this line. Now I'm going to give you our last problem. It's not really tricky, but let's do, let's do pay a little bit of attention to it. I'm going to tell you that the slope of this line is equal to 3. And I'm going to tell you that the y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 1. Now, we haven't really had a y-intercept with a negative number like this before, so let's take it one step at a time. Now, I'm going to stop for a minute and tell you that all of our plots and all of our graphs have always been in quadrant 1, meaning positive x and positive y. Very soon, we're going to open it up to all four quadrants. We're taking this first step here. Uh, just know that lines can exist all over the coordinate plane, even in the negative parts of the coordinate plane. We're going to get there, but I wanted to open the lessons with easier situations in quadrant number one. But in this case, we're told that the y-intercept actually is a negative number. So what we're told is that actually the y-intercept b is just negative one, because it's right here, zero comma negative one. The y-intercept is negative one. And the slope was equal to three. So the fact that it's negative doesn't change really anything. You do the same process. We know that y is m times x plus b. And then the slope is what? 3. So it's 3 times x plus b, but b was negative 1. See, mx plus b, where b was a negative number. But remember back from what we learned before, that anytime you have plus a minus sign, it's basically just subtraction. So you could write this as the equation of a line, mx plus b, that's correct. But really, when we have a plus minus, we always write it as subtraction, and this is the actual equation of this line. All right. Now, I'm not going to get into a full-blown lesson on this, but what would something like this look like? I don't have a pretty graph, so we'll just go down here. What we're saying here is that the y-intercept is negative 1. You can see it a little more clearly here, plus b, where b is negative 1. So basically what it means is that over here at negative 1, y is equal to negative 1, that's the y-intercept. That's where it crosses. And then the slope is positive 3, right? So that means up 3 over 1. So the slope is 3 is basically 3 over 1, right? Up 3 over 1. So that means 1, 2, 3 over 1. So from here we go up 1, 2, 3, and then over 1, the next point on, on the line would be basically right here. Up 3, and then over 1, and then of course you could draw, I can't draw a perfect straight line, but you can see that it would go through those two points, and I could keep going up 3 over 1 as well. But the y-intercept being negative doesn't, doesn't really change anything, it just means it crosses down here when the y values are negative, that's it. But you know, we haven't had a problem like that yet, so I just wanted to point that out to you. So here we've gone backwards. Instead of graphing something, I am instead giving you a graph or giving you information and asking you write down the equation of the line. It's an important skill, so solve these yourself. Follow me on part two. We'll continue working on this skill of writing equations using the slope and the y-intercept. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.